In this video, we're going to talk about endometriosis. Specifically, we're going to talk about the pathogenesis, pathophysiology, and signs and symptoms associated with endometriosis. So to provide a definition, endometriosis is defined as the presence of glands or stroma of the endometrium outside of the uterus. So all this means is that the endometrium or our typical innermost layer of the uterus, those cells can be found elsewhere. Endometriosis occurs in about 6 to 10 percent of females of reproductive age and can account for a number of pathologies associated with menstruation, abdominal pain, and infertility. We'll start by taking a look at the endometrial tissue itself and the histiology of this tissue and then we'll start by looking at where these cells can actually begin to reside in order to cause some of these issues. When we look at our endometrium, we know that we have a few layers. The, inner, the outermost layer is the striatum functionalis. This is the layer that's going to slope off during menstruation. The innermost layer is our striatum basalis, or this is the kind of basement layer of the endometrium that is going to stay consistent during menstruation. And when we're talking about endometriosis, we're primarily talking about striatum functionalis cells that are going to be found outside of the typical endometrium. We can look at the areas in which these cells may travel or begin to grow. One is the pelvic peritoneum. We also see implantation on the fallopian tubes. You can see endometrial tissue growth on the retrovaginal septum, or we could see growth on the ovaries themselves. It's important to note that as though, although these are the most common areas in which we're going to see implantation of these endometrial tissues, we could also see endometrial tissue growing in the uh, abdominal peritoneum or even on the abdominal organs themselves, although the fallopian tubes, the ovaries, the pelvic peritoneum, and then the retrovaginal septum are going to be the most common areas in which we're going to see the growth of this endometrial tissue and endometriosis. Now that we have an idea of where the endometrial tissue can actually grow in endometriosis, we're going to talk about the pathogenesis of endometriosis, and there's two core theories surrounding how endometriosis actually occurs. One is the non-uterine theory, and in this theory, it suggests that non-uterine tissue actually transforms into endometrial tissue through external stimuli. So tissue of the retrovaginal septum or the pelvic peritoneum is going to transform into endometrial tissue, or alternatively, tissues that have traveled from somewhere else are going to enter the pelvic perineum or the vaginal septum, and they're going to turn into endometrial tissue. We'll look at two examples of non-uterine theories. One of these is the bone marrow migration theory, and the second is one of estrogen stimulation of native cells. What we'll do is we'll blow up our fallopian tube and we'll take a look at the cells here because this is a common site of endometriosis development. What we're going to draw here is our bone marrow cell or a bone marrow mesenchymal cell. And what happens or what happens in this theory is this bone marrow cell is going to migrate through the bloodstream to the endometrium or to the fallopian tube and it will actually differentiate or this bone marrow mesenchymal cell will differenti differentiate into endometrial mesenchymal or di differentiate into endometrial tissue. So as a result the bone marrow cell did not start out as endometrial tissue but as it travels to the fallopian tube and embeds itself in that tissue it begins to form endometrial tissue and this is how one of the ways that we can get endometriosis. The second is estrogen stimulation so these yellow dots here will be estrogen and this theory posits that what's going to happen is this estrogen is going to, or the stimulation of estrogen of our fallopian tube cells are going to lead to differentiation into endometrial cells. So excessive stimulation by estrogen may potentially lead to the formation of endometrial cells. Alternatively to non-uterine theories, there are uterine theories that suggest that the spread of the endometrial tissue is coming from uterine origin or it's coming from the uterus itself. Some of these theories suggest that it could be hematogenic spread or spread through the blood supply, lymphatic spread or endometrial cells are entering the, entering the lymph and spreading, or it could be through retrograde menstruation through patent fallopian tubes. So we draw in our blood supply here and you can see our spiral arteries entering into the endometrium. What could happen is endometrial cells are now entering the blood supply and that is what's going to be allowing them to travel through the blood supply and allocate themselves to different areas of the body. Alternatively, this could be through what we call retrograde menstruation. So we can see the cells here actually moving back up. So if they're being sloughed off during menstruation, they're actually heading backwards through the fallopian tubes and out through that patent fallopian tube where they could hit the ovary or the pelvic peritoneum. 
to reiterate what's happening when we have the patent fallopian tube is we're actually seeing with these gray lines the retrograde flow of endometrial tissue during menstruation. So the tissue is being sloughed off during menstruation and now instead of exiting through the vaginal canal we actually see retrograde flow of those tissues and cells through the fallopian tubes. And if the fallopian tube is patent then we can see it exiting where it can now attach to the ovaries of the pelvic perineum. Interestingly we see a low incidence of endometriosis in women who have non-patent fallopian tubes suggesting that this theory has considerable weight. Lastly, we should look at the signs and symptoms associated with endometriosis. One of the core symptoms we see with endometriosis is dysmenorrhea or painful menstruation. Often this feels as though there's a burning, cramping, bloating, uh, pulling sensation during periods. We may also see dyspareunia, which is painful uh, intercourse. Uh, or chronic pelvic pain. This chronic pelvic pain is often associated with adhesions, and these adhesions occur due to scar tissue formation with progressive endometriosis. So what we draw here is some endometriosis on the uterus or in the pelvic peritoneum and some on the fallopian tube. And what can happen over time is as the scar tissue develops with this endometriosis, endometriosis adhesions can develop where the fallopian tube actually becomes um, adhesed to the uterus. This can happen with the abdominal organs, with the ovaries, with any of the kind of organs that are found in that peritoneal space. And this can result in a sharp pulling or stabbing pain. And this doesn't have to be solely associated with menstruation. This is where we can get this chronic pelvic pain that comes along with endometriosis. And it often needs a surgical fix. Another symptom that we may see is irregular menstruation or irregular uterine bleeding. So this may be determined to be spotting or irregular periods and what's actually happening is you have shedding of endometriosis from alternative areas leading to this irregular uterine bleeding. We can see infertility associated with endometriosis to put patients at risk of ectopic pregnancies if the egg is going to implant in ectopic endometriosis in the fallopian tubes for example um, and it can lead to pain with bowel movements in urination which is also likely related to these adhesions that may form during endometriosis.